Hello, hi, hi everyone. I'm Yuan Zhang from the EC department of Rice University, and here uh, today I'm going to present uh, A3CS, uh, automated generation and deployment of instantaneously switchable precision networks. So first, we are going to go over the background and motivation. So for the background and motivation, so nowadays, as we know, like uh, DNs has achieved great performance in very uh, various fields. So it feels a uh, great interest and also demand for deep reinforcement learning which has um, great usage in a lot of areas like robotics and the internet of things. However, a few challenges, and one of the major ones is the prohibitive uh, complexity of DLLs, uh, integrated DNs versus the, the edge devices and IoT devices, constraints resources in terms of the, the, the storage size and computing resources. So to close this large gap, uh, to this end, we propose a framework uh, which is termed as Automated Agent Accelerated Cost Search Framework, uh, A3CS. Uh, to first, we are the first to automatically cost search the op optimum matched uh, DLL agents, which is the network and the, also the accelerator structure, in order to maximize both the, the, the task accuracy and also the, the hardware efficiency. So that can run more efficiently, so the, the application can run more efficiently on the uh, resource constraint uh, devices. And our A3CS uh, is enabled by the is the first uh, differentiable NAS uh, search framework that's dedicated to the DRL. So, which is enabled by a novel uh, distillation mechanism to, uh, to effectively stabilize the agent search, uh, which uh, involves the high variance otherwise. And uh, A3CS also incorporates a parameterized microarchitecture to enable a differentiable search uh, for the DRL agent accelerators. And uh, we have conducted extensive experiments and ablation studies to, to validate uh, A3CS uh, uh, effectiveness. So here's an overview for uh, A3CS. So the whole framework takes the input user input of the accuracy and uh, the performance metric to optimize for uh, such as energy and latency. And it also takes the hardware resources uh, in terms like uh, uh, what is the maximum amount of the buffers and what is the maximum amount of the keys, uh, etc. And uh, the whole framework like, is composed of two parts, the network structure uh, on search and also the accelerator design search. So the network structure is, uh, is like the, the whole space is uh, parameterized by the options of operator type and kernel size and group norm and also channel expansions. So it's, it's going to parameterize each operator, which is going to, uh, which is going to form a uh, whole network structure for the DIL. And uh, the accelerator design is parameterized by uh, the, the parameters like uh, piece, uh, p, uh, process elements numbers, and uh, their inter interconnection schemes, and also the buffer management schemes, and the MAC tilings, uh, the multiply and cumulative uh, unit tilings and schedulings, and also the pipe, uh, pipeline stage allocations. Which is, going to, uh, which is going to be input to a predefined uh, hardware template uh, to form a, a generic hardware design space. And uh, the whole framework is going to tackle three major challenges. The first one is the prohibitive uh, joint search space, as we stated earlier, and also the non-differentiable accelerator space, because all these uh, accelerator parameters essentially form a space that's not differentiable. And, uh, and also the training and stability with high variance especially during the DNAS uh, uh, process for the DIL. And it's going to output uh, an optimally powered network uh, for DIL and also the, uh, the matching accelerator in order to maximize both the, the hardware efficiency and also the task uh, accuracy. So the overall formulation for A3CS is uh, we have the, uh, the overall objective to minimize both the, the, uh, the task loss, which is termed as the L task, uh, for the uh, for the DIL and also the the uh, hardware cost, which is uh, termed as uh, L cost. The task loss is parameterized by the the theta pi, uh, which is like the weight for the the actor uh, network, and the theta v, which is the uh, the uh, weight for the value networks, and also the network structure, uh, which is parameterized by the alpha, which is the structure parameters, to define the network structure. And the hardware cost is uh, parameterized by the hardware architecture, which is the HW, uh, a five star, and also the network structure. Uh, the hardware architecture is parameterized by the five star. Five star is basically like the optimal uh, pair, optimal set of hardware parameters to define a hardware uh, architecture. This can be solved by the minimize the, the uh, L cost function. 
uh, as, as we see here. And it's, uh, we're going to uh, try to solve this um, equation also later. Uh, but the first challenge is to, to how to stabilize the differential mass against the high variance of the DRR training. So when we uh, search for the network uh, operators and options. So to do, to do that, uh, we propose a AC distillation mechanism to distill the knowledge from a pre-trained actor critic agent to guide the search and the training process. The vanilla plus, uh, there's like uh, the vanilla policy distillation, um, merely distills the policy without considering uh, the value function, uh, which is like uh, 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 the V part, and uh, uh, which can play a critical part in uh, both assisting the policy updates and uh, reducing the variance of vanilla policy gradients. So we conjecture that further distilling the value function from the future agents uh, can better improve the training stability and also the convergence. So as uh, as formulated here, the pi and v are the actor and the critical. Uh, sorry, the the. Uh, so the the pi and v here is the the actor and the critical networks respectively, and we use KL divergence between the teacher and students uh, actors, and uh, and the mean square root error between the teacher and student critics to guide the learning of both the actor and the critics here. So we can uh, st essentially stabilize the DNS process and then uh, improve the training optimality uh, uh, through the uh, net network search. And uh, the second challenge is the, uh, how to effectively explore the huge joint space, as we stated earlier. So first, uh, for that part, first we adopt the single path forward strategy. Um, that is only one operator in the, the forward, uh, forward path. Uh, in, in the supernet is going to be uh, activated during the forward pass. In this way, the search cost during the forward, uh, forward process can uh, be uh, notably reduced compared to the activating all possible operators. In addition, single path forward can uh, have narrow the gap between the supernet and also the finally derived network, reducing the coupling and also cooperation between uh, different operators to better measure their independent performance when being separately trained. In particular, uh, we adopt the goblet softmax sampling uh, here to uh, based on an alpha to get a new probability distribution and also uh, only the choice with the highest probability can be activated going forward. In other words, goblet softmax on alpha will generate one shot mask which is uh, applied on the top of the operator uh, set to activate only one choice. And for the, the for the core search uh, for the core search part during the backward uh, for the the uh, the backward uh, part we active multiple paths for updating the architectural parameters to alpha, which can help to speed up the, the convergence to alpha to faster identify a good architecture compared with a single path uh, path, path forward. So it uh, so it's essentially balance the search efficiency, which prefers like fewer activity paths, and the uh, the stability, which prefers like more activity paths. Um, uh, which is like uh, the model path backward here. So as formulated here, we activate uh, we activate like a K pathis during the backward process and estimate the uh, we estimate the gradients of the double self max sampling via straight uh, gradient estimator to uh, make the process fully differentiable. In this work, we set a K equal to two to balance the search efficiency and the set of as uh, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, uh, for for processing the uh, and in terms of the cost search, uh, sorry, in terms of the hardware cost penalty, um, it's uh, we uh, there's a little dilemma here. It's essentially a chicken and an egg problem. So uh, that um, specifically, so uh, in order to uh, to uh, give the, the hardware cost as we stated in the, the original like the major formulation L cost, we need to have to have like layer wise hardware cost penalties. That relies on the, uh, the the optimal. We need to have the optimal accelerator, so that way we can have layer-wise hardware cost penalty for the, the network. However, the optimal network accelerator uh, uh, relies on the optimal network because we need the network as the input for the, the, the hardware search to produce the optimal accelerator. So it's like essentially a loop, and if you break the loop. We adopt a single path uh, network as a proxy. So uh, essentially, when we trend enough for the, the architecture uh, parameters alpha, and we're going to use that to uh, gobble up the max uh, sample a network to use that as a proxy of for the, the uh, optimal network to produce search so to search for the optimal accelerator. And uh, 
and for uh, and for uh, the optimal accelerator, we're also going to use the Gabor software max to uh, assemble the the optimal accelerator and uh, to us uh, to use as a, as also as a proxy. And we're going to uh, approximate the levelized hardware cost, uh, assuming these uh, these sampled optimal accelerator to uh, essentially like break the loop of the chicken and egg problem. And in terms of the differentiable velocity of the, the uh, accelerator search. We proposed a differential accelerator search engine to explore the accelerator search uh, space given the network. Uh, in particular, uh, given the network, which is the most uh, like, uh, likely network sampled uh, during the single path forward, the search engine utilizes how to gobble uh, software max sampling on each uh, design parameter file uh, to build a accelerator and uh, penalize each sampled accelerator parameter uh, with overall or hardware cost to update file with a straight gradient estimator. Uh, of the Gabor self max sampling in, uh, in a differential manner. And, uh, and uh, for the, the space, we're going to search the uh, accelerator parameter sound. We uh, have predefined a accelerator template. So the overall template is a chunk based pattern microarchitecture. So it's essentially uh, a, a, um, a sample accelerator uh, arrays uh, formed by a multiple of sub accelerators, which we termed as chunks. And uh, we're going to assign, assign like layers, not necessarily uh, consecutively, to uh, each chunk to process in a pipeline fashion. And uh, the searchable parameters for uh, this template is called uh, process element settings, which is we uh, also the number of process elements and also the uh, uh, interconnection start strategies and also the buffer management, also the tiling and the uh, scheduling schemes, and also the layer allocations to each uh, chunk, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, as to the evaluation results, so first uh, we are uh, going to draw some insights in, in terms like uh, the DRL's performance against the model size. And as we see here, so um, it's, it's not that intuitively. So um, uh, for the larger model size, the larger model size does not necessarily lead to a, like, uh, a better performance. So as we can see here, so for the breakout, we can see um, we have like a ResNet 38 achieved like uh, the, the, the best performance. But for some uh, other games, for example, the Asteroids, uh, some smaller network uh, indeed produced a better uh, performance than the larger networks. So they're all, then we draw the conclusion like uh, we, um, we infer like there always exists a task specific optimal network size. So that motivates us to like to actually search for the, uh, the specific network that's um, according to every single specific task. And uh, then we're going to evaluate the, the AC distillation strategy we, uh, we proposed. So as we, say, we can see here, so generally the, uh, the, the, the implementations with uh, distillation outperforms the, uh, the implementations without the, uh, the uh, distillation. And our AC distillation uh, strategies uh, generally perform the vanilla policy distillation. And uh, additionally, uh, we uh, we also evaluate uh, the uh, we also show the test scores during the the training uh, the search steps. And we, as we can see here, our AC, uh, AC distillation uh, like uh, have like a quicker uh, steeper uh, the test score rise during the the search steps. That that means that it can provide the better estimate. Uh, of the, the the search process and leads to a more effectiveness, uh, more effective DNAS in a DIL. And uh, uh, evaluating uh, in terms of evaluating a 3 cs both in terms of the accuracy and also test scoring and also uh, the the hardware efficiency, which is like frame per second uh, FPS here. And as we can see, a 3 cs generally outperformed uh, the baseline in a better performance parameter. And uh, for the blue line here, the DM Builder one, we uh, we accelerate like three uh, baseline uh, networks on a, a, a state of art um, accelerators, a uh, DM accelerator, DM builder. And for the ResNet 14, we use the ResNet 14 structure and we accelerate that using our own uh, accelerator search engine. And as, as we can see here, A3CS generally leads to a better uh, performance frontier in both the, the test scores and the, the frame uh, per second. And then to summarize the, the work, so we we uh, uh, overall we propose a automated agent uh, accelerator for search framework, and uh, that's like the first framework to co-search the, the both the DRL agents and accelerators. 
uh, which contributes to the uh, better testing accuracy and also the hardware efficiency at the same time.